One of the hardest things about being a data engineer actually has nothing to do with the technology or the skill set, and that is trying to explain to other people what it is you actually do, especially people who don't work in data. They're not familiar with the terminologies. But one concept that I routinely come back to with this explanation is talking about data pipelines. So in today's video, we're going to talk about what is a data pipeline? What are some examples of common data pipelines? And then how will you work with them as a data engineer? And hopefully by the end of this, you'll be able to explain what it is you do a little bit more clearly and to anybody, whether they work in data or not. So the way I think about this and the way I like to explain it is a data pipeline is moving data from a bunch of source systems to some end user analytics, whether it's reporting dashboards so that a business has visibility and can make decisions off of all of their data. But you might lose a lot of people with that explanation because we're talking abstract concepts and as developers, we're so ingrained in working with code and these concepts that to somebody who's not involved with that, that might be a little bit too confusing. So a go to example for me typically is a manufacturing plant. And before I came a developer, I actually worked in supply chain management, I actually worked in a manufacturing facility. So this hits close to home. And if you think about any product, let's just say a can of soda, it's going to go from a bunch of raw materials, it goes through all the different machines, it gets packaged up and then put on a pallet and shipped out for people to use. And the end product in that scenario would be the actual can or bottle of soda. But there's a lot of machinery and automation in between those raw materials and that final can of soda. And that whole process is typically mechanical engineering or electrical engineering. But for us as data engineers, engineers, everything is digital. So we're working with different tools and technologies to turn raw data into an output of analytics or reporting something that's useful and consumable for other people to use. So of course, there's a lot of different examples of what a data pipeline might look like, and it's going to be specific to a company. But the two main ways you'll see this are as batch pipelines and then streaming pipelines, again, generally speaking. So a batch pipeline is going to take everything from those raw data sources over to some final reporting models or reports on a scheduled cadence. So maybe it's once an hour or once a day, whatever makes sense. And it's batching that whole process together. The other option is streaming and streaming is going to be a little bit more real time as an event happens. Let's say somebody clicks on something, that event, that record is going to be captured and moved along into let's say a database or perhaps directly into your reporting tool and you can add transformation in between there with different tools but in that scenario it's happening in real time as opposed to waiting for the next batch run now typically you actually will see a combination of the two some data might be on a batch schedule others in real time streaming and again this is where the variety comes into play another term or an acronym that you're going to see is dag dag which stands for directed acyclic graph it's essentially it's a way to create a pipeline line of tasks typically in code that have dependencies on each other. So step C is dependent on step B, which is dependent on step A. So the tool you use to create this graph, let's say, is going to know what needs to run first, what's more priority uh, and what is dependent on each other. So if something breaks, it won't run those downstream tasks and vice versa. Common tools you're going to see with this concept are Airflow. Airflow is something you can use to trigger different jobs and different events. And you can create this DAG that will then run the different tasks in the correct order. Another one is DBT, and you can build a DBT models based on a DAG. And it's only going to go in one direction. In a DAG, you can't have cycles or loops because you're going to have circular dependencies. So this concept kind of forces you to think through what order are things running and making sure that you don't have things repeating on each other because it really can go only one direction here. So the last thing here is how are you going to work with data pipelines as a data engineer? And so a couple areas where you're going to be involved here are that first part where you're extracting sources, you'll have to work with the integration of specific tools like Fivetran, Stitch, Airbyte, or maybe Kafka for streaming. The next step would be that in between spot where you're writing transformations. So maybe you're using a tool like DBT, SSIS, Informatica, Data Factory, anything really, it's that middle part is part of your data pipeline. And that's the part where you're cleaning everything up. And then lastly is that automation and the scheduling portion where you're going to work with tools like Airflow or Dagster or anything, or maybe just SQL Server agent job, whatever it is, it's going to allow you to schedule your different tasks in an order and monitor your entire pipeline end to end. And as an engineer, that's something you're absolutely going to be responsible for and that you'll spend a lot of time doing. So hopefully now you have a better understanding of what data pipelines are and how you're going to use them as a data engineer. But we didn't talk too much about the specific strategies for implementing this stuff. So check out this next video on ETL versus ELT to learn a little bit more about two of the most common approaches for this.